Hello, everybody. What's going on? I hope you're doing well. Uh, listen, it's early morning. I just watched WandaVision. I got my, you know, ate my breakfast, got my coffee, whatever. Um, this is the QA video that I was supposed to do, like, I think, like, three weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> these kind of videos, they're hard for me to do. I tend to blab a lot. The best way to do it is just to do it, I guess. All right. So I asked for you guys to put questions in the comment section. I'm going to answer 10 of them. Sip. All right. So... Question number one, just the usual stuff, like who inspired you when you started to play guitar? What was your first electric guitar you ever had? Did you take lessons? All right, first off, this is like this is like five questions in one. Actually, it's like three. I don't know if you guys have watched the really old, I did like a really old Q&A video, but I kind of answered this question, but I guess I'll do it again. You know, we got a lot of new people on the channel. Biggest inspiration for me, my dad. My dad is actually like a thrash metal guitarist. You know, in the 90s, he was in bands. You know, doing originals, playing shows, doing covers and stuff like that. So for me, growing up, you know, when I first started playing guitar, I was getting into metal. That was all because of my dad. He was always listening to Metallica growing up, and then he started, like, listening to In Flames and getting into heavier stuff. And I was just, like, right there with him, you know, listening to the same stuff. And that's around the time, you know, I started playing guitar. So I really looked up to my dad. You know, he's been a shredder, really great guitar player. So that was my number one. After that, you know, you guys got guys like Alexi Laiho, um, Chuck Sh Chuck for Sheldon, <laughs> Chuck Sheldoner from Death. You know, more shreddy people like um, Steve Vai, Tony McAlpine, Vinny Moore, Jason Becker, uh, Ingvae Malmsteen. You know, I wish I could play like these guys, but obviously, big inspirations as well. Just like you know, their mastery of the instrument, incredible players. Um, and also, what was your first electric guitar? Uh, my first guitar was a Jackson Dinky. My parents actually bought it for me when I was seven. I was just a seven-year-old. I wanted to play video games, um, and I had a guitar. I didn't want to play it. Too much work. You know, whatever. A seven-year-old kid. Stayed under my bed until I was 14. You know, that's when I started learning, because I had some other friends who started learning as well. So, like, you know, I saw them, and I was like, well, you're going to play guitar. I want to play guitar. You know, so that's kind of how it started out. All right. Question number two. When did you find out about Rocksmith? I'm really curious about that. Did you ever, ever think Rocksmith would be your living after playing if not, when did you realize it was going to be your career on Twitch? It was the year that they unveiled the first Rocksmith, and they did it on stage, and I believe they had Jerry Cantrell of Alice in Chains. Basically, it was a big E3 presentation, Ubisoft. Jerry Cantrell comes out, and he starts playing guitar on stage. And they were like, yeah, Rocksmith, uh, you know, play guitar, whatever. And then, like, they showed it on the screen. I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. You know, I like gaming. I like guitar. And I kind of forgot about it for a really long time um, until Rocksmith 2014 was, you know, released. I didn't actually take it super serious until I saw somebody streaming it on Twitch. Now, you know, I've been a big Twitch viewer for a long time. I was hardcore into like League of Legends, Dota, StarCraft 2, you know, esports kind of stuff. And I always thought that Twitch was a place for gaming. However, one day, you know, I was just like, hey, that game Rocksmith, whatever. And I searched it up and I saw a couple people streaming it and I was like, oh, this looks pretty cool. And, you know, they had, you know, a pretty significant amount of people watching them. And I was like, well, you know, I can play guitar and I like playing video games. So maybe I'll try streaming Rocksmith, you know, I'll tell you right now uh, that shit, shit was way harder than, you know, than it looked. And I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way. You walk, probably watch me on Twitch or YouTube and you're like, hey, cool, I want to play Rocksmith. And you try it and you're like, oh, my God, this is. This is insane. This is way too hard. So no, you know, I didn't think I would ever come to this. Like, this would be my, you know, thing that I do for a living. Never in a million years did I ever think this was going to be a thing. Um, and when did I realize it was going to be my career on Twitch? Hmm, that's a hard one to answer because even after I got Twitch partner, like, you know, the streams were going well and stuff, but I, you know, I wasn't making enough to, to you know, sustain my living, you know? So for that, there was never really one moment where it kind of like flicked in my head like, oh, you're going to do this full time. It just kind of happened. Yeah, it wasn't like one quick realization. It was kind of like, you know, a slow build, I guess you could say. Anyways, good question. Do you play any other instruments other than guitar? Guitar has been my only thing. Now, I would say I do have some regrets, you know. For a while, I wanted to like get a drum kit and start learning drums, right? Me and my girlfriend, we we own our house. You know, we, we bought this house together. I remember one of the things was like, hey, when we get a house, you know, I want to put a drum kit in the basement. However, you know, 
lived here for a while, and then I started streaming on Twitch, and then it was like, all right, all my money is going towards Twitch streaming and, uh, you know, cameras and PCs and, and guitars and whatever. So, like, all my money started going towards that. And then the drum set kind of just, like, you know, wasn't uh, wasn't a, a thing anymore, wasn't a priority or an idea. You know, also, like, thinking, you know, about it, like, I would really like to, you know, learn piano, like, keys, like, even at a basic level. So maybe that's something I could work on. Uh, Red Varg, yo, uh, friend of my Twitch stream here. Do you want to create some own material like EP or collab album? And second question, which technique do you feel you need to work on, if any? Um, in terms of like original material, yeah, that's, you know, I've been talking about this for a long time. And I've posted like little snippets on the channel, like of riffs and stuff that I've been making. Um, right now is like the ripest time. You know, I got this YouTube channel that's taken off because of my Rocksmith videos. Which channel is doing really well because people are watching me play Rocksmith and hanging out a lot. And Instagram and like the TikTok are starting to pop off too. So it's like, I feel like I got all this attention on me. And uh, I think this would be like the perfect opportunity to make some music of my own. Uh, but obviously, like, there, there's a lot of stuff that comes with that, like being nervous about it, like, oh, I'm not going to be good enough. You know, I can't produce it well enough, blah, blah, blah. So there's all kinds of like mixed feelings there. And I have like tons and tons of like guitar pro files that I wrote when I was younger, you know, stuff that I wrote with friends when we were younger. I got a lot of stuff that I could like kind of pull and work out and, uh, you know, make it to something. Hopefully this year. I know I keep saying that a lot, but I have all the equipment now. I just I just need the skill set. I need to like work on drum programming and mastering and all that stuff. So it can be learned. I just got to, you know, spend the time on it. Uh, and as for the second question, which technique do you feel you need to work on, if any? Uh, I would say everything. You know, I um, I don't think I do anything specifically on guitar at like a master level, you know? I could do three string sweeps okay. Five string, they just sound like mud. You know, tapping, you know, string muting is also a factor there. In terms of solos, like doing runs, like my my two-hand coordination, you know, I feel like it's really weak. So there's a lot of stuff that I feel like I can work on still. And um, I just got to put the time into it, you know? There's lots of lots of lessons and stuff that, that, I've, that I've looked into doing. And um, yeah, we just need to put the time into it. Uh, glad to hear things are going so well for you. Thanks. One question that I have is, do you think Rocksmith has improved your playing significantly since you started streaming? Yeah, so the thing is, before I started streaming Rocksmith, you know, people ask me, like, how long have you played guitar for? And it's like, yeah, 17 years or something. Kind of statement like that, be having played for that long. You know, that doesn't take into account, like, all the times that I took breaks, or before I started streaming, like, I would play guitar once every four weeks, you know, I'd pick it up for like 20 minutes, practice a, practice an arpeggio and be like, ah, cool, put that down. It's like, all right, don't touch the guitar for another month, you know? So I think the, the biggest thing is that the fact that I stream the game so much now, you know, uh, just having the guitar in my hands has helped me improve. Um, in terms of actually using the game to learn to improve, I don't know if I could speak to that so much because, you know, I had already played for so long before I started the game. You know, when I picked up Rocksmith, it was like, all right, crank it to max and like, let's go. You know, I don't necessarily know if I can answer that definitively, but in terms of me playing, I know I have become a lot better. Um, but I think that's more so for me, like when I'm streaming, being like myself, I'm going to focus on different techniques, you know, like I'm going to focus on down picking these riffs instead of like alternate picking that I used to do. You know, I used to alternate pick everything or like, you know, I'm going to try and mute these notes better when I do this kind of like solo section or whatever. So like, I don't necessarily know if that's the game, you know, helping me get better or just like me focusing on different things while using the game. I know this is kind of like a, this answer is probably like a little bit more complex than you were looking for, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I'm not sure, I guess. <laughs> Uh, what are your expectations for the next Rocksmith game? Hey, actually, I uh, I had to block this guy from my channel because he was talking about pirating Rocksmith. Um, uh, I guess I'll still answer the question, though. I said this on my Twitch stream the other week. Um, but questions like this, currently, I'm kind of limited in what I can say. I've been on the official Rocksmith broadcast uh, twice now. They had me on there. So, you know, I've been talking to them a little bit. Um... And what I am allowed to say is that I am currently under NDA with Ubisoft. So right now, my speculation on this uh, topic is a little bit limited. So I will leave it at that for now, okay? 
How do you deal with the DMC issues on Twitch if you have them since your stream almost all about playing music and, and guitar? This is like a big, big question that I get a lot. And, uh, you know, I could blab about this for like hours. Definitively, what I could say is that, you know, me streaming music that I don't own on Twitch is against the rules, uh, <laughs> so to speak. Now, you know, there's a lot of gray area, like Twitch doesn't necessarily enforce the rules, like they only enforce the rules if they get DMCA claims from record labels, um, you know, but the record labels are not claiming against the streamers right now. There are some times in the past where it has happened for like songs that were on videos and clips. To my knowledge has never happened for music being played live, which is what I do. So when I'm streaming, what I do is, if you're watching my stream live, you can hear me playing the songs with the music. If you go to my clips in the VODs, it doesn't record the music. I have a special setting in my OBS um, that basically pushes the music to live, but it doesn't record it. So, you know, if the, the labels are sending their, like, DMCA bots to scan Twitch, they're not going to find any music in my VODs. But if they want to, you know, watch me live and be like, hey, we're going to DMCA strike this guy, well, they're totally within their right to. Um, it just hasn't happened yet. A lot of the music that I am playing on my Twitch stream is actually approved by the bands. You know, we actually have bands that come to us and are like, hey, we want to get you, you know, can you, can you play our stuff? It's really cool. It's cool promotion or whatever. Now, obviously, the fear would be like, you know, uh, I think it's a lot more scary if you're listening to, like, dance music, top 40 hits or whatever on stream. But for us in the metal universe, it's kind of like, you know, nothing has really happened yet. You know, I can keep doing this right now, so I'm going to keep doing it. There's no point living in fear of the whole thing uh, when we can be doing it now, you know, and enjoying the moment. So we're doing it now. We're doing it live. Um, if things change, then they'll have to change. But currently, you know, we're, we got a good thing going on. So, like, let's keep doing it, you know. James Hatfield. Look at this picture. He's got a little hat on here. Um, what are your favorite Kalma and Morse Prince of Pam Est albums? Also, do you prefer Finnish Melodeath or Swedish Melodeath? Uh, that second part of the question, I just, that's whatever. Uh, I feel like if I say anything here, it's just going to start an argument. But Kalma album. Uh, it'd have to be the orange one. I think it's Swamp Lord. I'm sure Chaotic can like flash it here. Uh, it's the one. Yeah, it's like the orange guy with like the weird trident. It's just the riffs on there are so damn brutal and so good. But that being said, every Kalma, is every Kalma album is amazing. They're obviously my favorite band. I've said it multiple times. Kalma, Melodic Death Metal, like seriously, number one. Number two band, my number two favorite band, though, is also Morse Prince Pam S. And I think my favorite album from them would be The Unborn, I think it's called. Let me search it up here. Yeah, The Unborn. Um, You know, I feel like Morse Prince Pam S has had a really big, has had a really big resurgence since Andy Jillian joined the band. And they're putting out such absolutely killer music but i feel like their first couple albums really get ignored uh because you know they were before andy was in the band and those albums like absolutely shredded like if you go listen to morse prince pam s the unborn it was like they're just masterpieces of melodic death metal especially with the synth and the shredding and actually now that i think about it i don't know if that those guitar players went on to do anything i should probably check them out because they were really good and they left the band they left the band favorite song ever What's that Minecraft song with the creeper there? Creeper, oh man, or whatever. Yeah, that one. What? I, I can't answer this. I'm sorry, I just can't do it. Driller Killer, what kind of other genres are you listening to or have you listened to? Do you have any secret music phases like techno that you went through? So first things first here, secret music phases. Like, listen, if anybody's having a secret music phase, just, get, you know, who cares? You know, it, don't keep it a secret. Think about music, it's like, music is there for us to enjoy, and everybody should enjoy everything. You know, if you have to hide the fact that you're enjoying music from, like, friends or whatever, it's like, they're probably assholes, so. But no, uh, secret music phases, like, nothing that I would call a secret, but I've talked about it before, like, you know, I, I used to listen to a lot of Lady Gaga stuff. Um, in high school, when I was getting to metal, there was a lot of, like, you know, I was listening to a lot of emo stuff, too. Taking Back Sunday. You know, a lot of the Screamo stuff, like Silverstein, Atreyu, you know, stuff like that. I did go through, like, a big Monster Cat era as well, where I was, like, buying every Monster Cat album. You know, they put out these, like, albums of electronic music. So I was listening to a lot of that. Another big thing is, like, the retro, the retro chill wave, whatever the hell you want to call it, synth wave, blah, 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 like that really retro 80s feeling stuff. Absolutely love that music, you know, just super nice to relax to. You know, like, I play seven hours of metal on Twitch every single day, so it's it's kind of nice afterwards to listen to some, like, nice, you know, 
I wouldn't say lo-fi. I feel like lo-fi music is kind of boring to me, but you know, the synthwave stuff like uh, Droid Bishop or uh, Gunship, uh, you know, Mega Drive, stuff like that, you know, that kind of music. 10 questions already. Um, now listen, if you made it to this point in the video, I commend you because I probably talked a lot. I don't know how long this video is going to be. If you made it this far and you're enjoying these, I'm going to issue you a challenge. In this comment section, leave more questions, you know, and try and make them different from the ones that we answered today. We're going to take 10 questions from this video, comment section, and we'll roll that forward into the next video. So you want to ask me anything, you know, toss them in here now. I just got to say, like, listen, everybody, thank you so much. The YouTube channel has still been bumping. So many new subs. Uh, I mean, I've been experimenting a little bit with the YouTube short videos. Um, just like little things, an extra thing that I toss up per day. And they've been doing really well as well. Like, we're getting a lot of subs and, you know, new eyes on the channel from the YouTube shorts. So, like, it's only helping us right now. So if you have any recommendations for stuff you'd like to see as YouTube short videos, you know, let me know. And I'll try my best to, to get them in there. Also, everybody, you know, make sure you're following on all the social medias in the description down below. Uh, TikTok has do, been doing really well. I just got like 700 TikTok followers in the last two days. So I don't know what's going on there, but make sure you're riding that wave as well. Instagram, Twitter, if you want cat videos and cat pictures. And the biggest one, make sure you're joining our Twitch streams because they have been absolutely killer lately. We've been doing a lot of giveaways. We've been giving away a lot of Chain Brain shirts. Chaotic will put the zombie shirt up here that we've been giving away a lot. Giving away a lot of these lately. You know, it's been a lot of fun. So twitch.tv slash chainbrain, 2 p.m. Eastern, like every single day we're streaming, and we just play songs that you ask for. So if you ever want to see me try anything, just join the Twitch stream and and, and uh, request a tune. All right. So uh, this has been great, everybody. I hope you enjoyed a little bit of insight into the chain brain, so to speak, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. All right. Have a good weekend, week. I don't know when this is going live. I'm just talking a lot about nothing now, and uh, yes, yeah, so let's just end this here.